This demo highlights the capability of EMC technologies such as VMAX-C and FastVP to support mission-critical enterprise-class SQL Server 2012 virtual infrastructures. We'll first talk about the architectural design of the demo environment. Then, Symmetrix SMC will be introduced to create LUNs and present them to a VM. FastVP testing will be demonstrated after that, and the performance impact of the readable copy and SQL Server Always On Availability Group will be examined at the end of this demo. The demo is provisioned on EMC Symmetrix VMAX-E with FastVP, which offers a simple, efficient, and high availability storage platform for SQL Server 2012. Four active OLTP databases totaling 1.8 terabytes of data are replicated to the secondary SQL Server using the Always On Availability Group. With the Always On Availability Group readable copy on the secondary server, the primary replica was dedicated for mission critical OLTP workloads, while the online analytical processing business intelligence demands were isolated on the readable replica. EMC FastVP technology automatically places the most important data on high performance flash drives and pushes less active data to lower tiers but keeps it within easy reach. This ensures that Microsoft SQL Server 2012 deployment can sustain a desired performance for the primary databases while providing read-only access on the secondary replica. Building on EMC's industry-leading VMware integration, creating and presenting LUNs to a VM is very simple on VMAX-E. This is Symmetrics Management Console, or SMC, an intuitive browser-based graphical interface for performance and device management on Symmetric systems. It is consolidated in a single console view to manage storage provisioning, view, monitor, and report on Symmetrics array resources. To monitor the performance of VMAX-E, the Performance Analyzer could be invoked to give detailed performance data, which can be the whole array as shown here, or a drill down to the storage group or even the storage pool level. Now let's create two LUNs and make them available for the SQL Server VM. In the host screen, type the ESX server name and add the initiator, making sure the port group is correct. Create two 200 gigabyte thin devices on the fiber channel tier. Put them into the default VASVP policy control. Now we can see the summary of our configuration, which can then be finalized. Going back to the SMC properties, we will find that the storage group has been created for the two LUNs that are ready to use. In the virtual center for that ESX host, we can see that the devices are already accessible via VSI, and the information about these LUNs is also readily available. Now let's make it available to the SQL Server VM SQL 02. You can always use vCenter, but VMAX also has an integrated wizard for this task. Find the ESX server, choose the VM that needs to be mapped, choose to add devices, select storage, You are done. The storage is now available on the VM and ready to be configured through Windows Storage Management for SQL Server to use. Now let's check the SQL Server VM and we'll see that the LUNs are available to the server. EMC Fully Automated Storage Tiering for Virtual Pools, or FastVP, is automation software that puts the right data to the right place at the right time. It uses simplified policies to manage virtual storage pools and does this with built-in automation and intelligence. FastVP optimizes performance and reduces cost while radically simplifying management and increasing storage efficiency. Before FastVP was enabled, an OLTP workload was started on the primary copy of the databases. Total IOPS in the primary SQL server is around 9,500, 
and secondary of 1500. Fast VP settings. The workload analysis period is set to two hours and time to sample before first analysis is also two hours. Now let's enable the fast VP. After the two hour sampling plus the two hour analysis period, data starts to move to different tiers. Total IOPS has increased on the SQL servers. It will take about four hours of fast VP to reach a stable state with total IOPS of 25,000. Now let's check how the data is distributed onto different tiers on the VMAX E. This one has 31% of its data moved to SSD and 9% move down to the SATA tier, while 59% stays on fiber channel tier. Remember, we started with 100% fiber channel tier. The transactions per second for baseline SQL Server load before and after enabling fast VP is plotted here. For this configuration, a two hour fast VP sample time and a two hour analysis window are configured. In total time, it took four hours before data started to move based on the fast VP policy. The data movement was stabilized after another four hours. After enabling the fast VP policy, the total transactions per second increased from around 1100 to 2300 with lower disk latency, more disk IOPS, and no change in other performance counters. Note that after fast VP is stabilized, it usually adjusts workloads within 10 minutes based on production system activities. Upon initial configuration and power up, FastVP has the intelligence to learn and array's workload before starting to move data into the flash tier. The four hour move time is typical of an initial startup. One of the new features introduced in SQL Server 2012 is the always on availability group. Here we're going to examine the performance impact of the readable secondary database. In this demo, we created one availability group for four databases, 50 gigabytes, 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes, and one terabyte, respectively. Always on availability group provides all the functionality of database mirroring and log shipping and a rich set of options such as readable active secondary for better utilization of the secondary instance. Here the databases are protected in synchronous commit mode where the readable secondary copy is synchronized with the primary database and all committed transactions are protected. First, we put a heavy OLTP load in the primary database. This load is going to be running throughout the entire test. SQL 01 is our primary database, which is going to get all the OLTP transactions. Once it's stabilized, the system can process around 27,000 IOPS. The SQL 01 CPU usage is around 40 to 50 percent. Next, a read only OLAP load was directed to the primary server start to compete for the primary SQL Server's resources, and as a result, you'll see the OLTP load performance was taking a hit from it. Now the OLAP transactions are also directed to SQL 01. The system total IOPS climbs up a bit and will stabilize around 28,000 IOPS. CPU usage has now jumped to more than 60%. Now we remove the OLAP load from the primary server and keep the OLTP load. Then we redirect the OLAP to the secondary server and you'll see the OLTP load performance getting back to a similar level with the baseline without the OLAP load. Now we stop the OLAP load on SQL 01 and we'll see the total IOPS drop by removing the additional load. Then we redirect the same read only load to SQL 02 secondary database server. The system total IOPS climbs up again, this time above the 30,000 IOPS line. The CPU usage is now coming down to 40 to 50 percent as before. The ESXi servers are currently performing well without any detectable stress. There is no overcommitted CPU or memory usage on the VMs for the SQL nor the management servers. 
running OLAP workload on the secondary server reduced the I.O. latency back to the level of the baseline. In the testing, the write latency on the primary server was reduced from 13 milliseconds to 9 milliseconds after we redirected the OLAP workload to the secondary server. The total IOPS increased when the OLAP workload was directed to the secondary server even though the workloads were all kept the same. In this solution environment, after the read-only OLAP workload was put on the primary server, the total transactions per second on the primary server from the previously running OLTP transaction performance decreased about 30%. When that workload is redirected to the secondary readable database copy, the primary server performance counters were back to the original level. The performance of the OLAP workload is also improved significantly after moving to the secondary readable copy. This indicates that the secondary server can handle a much greater read-only workload than the primary without impacting the primary server. Thank you for viewing this demo. For more information, please visit our website at www.emc.com forward slash 